Today, I'm gonna to show you how I manage my I.O. when mixing Dolby Atmos projects inside of Pro Tools. There are a few different ways to manage your input configuration to the renderer when you're mixing in Dolby Atmos inside of Pro Tools. I like to use the binaural settings plugin, and I'll show you how I do that. Once you instantiate this Atmos binaural settings plugin inside your session, the renderer will see that that input configuration is being controlled from that plugin. If I switch over to the renderer, open up the input configuration, you'll see this warning that says input configuration is being controlled by the settings plugin. That's what we want. I'm going to cancel that. If I remove this settings plugin from my session, go back to the renderer, open up input configuration, you can see that warning is gone. Well, now I can manage the input configuration here inside the renderer. I like to do it with the binaural settings plugin because then it can change from song to song. I can set up my own default configuration inside of the binaural settings plugin. It can be a part of my mix template. Then I can quickly manage that objects, uh, the binaural settings from near, mid to far on each mix. I don't have to go back and forth between the renderer. So I have set up a default configuration, pro, uh, a plugin setting, which essentially signs all objects from 41 to 69 on near, 70 through 99 are set to mid, and then 100 through 128 are set to far. And that looks like this. And without diving too deep into my actual mix template, you may say, what about objects 1 through 41? Well, obviously, the bed is assigned to the first 10 tracks, right? I do not use the bed. When I mix in Dolby Atmos, I'm 100% objects. And I've created an object mix bus that essentially gets input from the renderer, objects 11 through 34. And then just to keep the numbers straight, I went to 40, 41 for my near objects. You can manage that how you want. As you can see, object 25 is missing here. Well, here's some workflow ways to make those objects reappear or disappear. Now I have a stream deck on my on my desk here. So I'm going to open my IO. As you can see some of these IO guys are grayed out. 25 is one that I need access to because on my object bed you can see object 25 is not mapped. So if I go through select the lob object 11 through 12 all the way down to 127, 128. I'm holding shift, option, and click. That will expand everything. You can see there's more than one object that are disabled here. Well, that's because I took the session to Sweetwater Studios recently and reviewed these mixes with my clients. Now that I'm back home, my I.O. is a little different than theirs, and this is a way that I can manage that. There's a couple different ways that you can manage this. But chances are, if you're mixing in Dolby Atmos, you've kind of felt this, like, oh, my I.O. has changed. How do I get back? So to recap, I want to turn on all those objects because I'm going to work on the mix, and then I'm going to reprint it. And then when I get ready to print, if I do not remove the unused objects in my session, the renderer will say, here's an error. You can't print this mix, basically, without removing the unused objects from your session. So, again, back in the I.O. tab, hold Shift, Option, select all those. You can uncheck these with a click, right? And then go all the way back to the top. You can see the ones that stay check, checked Excuse me, are the ones that still are in the session. Now if I go through and hold shift option still while I click, you can see now they all turn back on. 
Now, the reason for that is because the binaural settings plugin is set to my default configuration. If I go back into that plugin, you can see all objects from 11 through 128 are assigned an object and then a binaural setting. And now look at the remove unassigned objects is now highlighted inside the plugin. So that's how I get back to zero when I'm working on a mix and I've taken it to another place or maybe I've opened another session, came back to this one, discovered there were some IO errors. That's how I get back to default. Now, this song isn't released, so I can't play it for you, but I'm hoping to dive into this one soon. I would go through, make my mix changes, now I need to print, right? So inside my session, I have the Stereo Master. And again, without diving too deep into my mix template, I have the Atmos mix set to a, a VCA fader. So I can then AB the Stereo Mastered mix with the Atmos mix. Now, what I do, since I have the Stereo Master inside the session, I can select that length of that Stereo Master. My stems are all aligned, aligned with that. I have started this Atmos mix from stems. Then when I go to upload, or the client goes to upload the Atmos mix, it will be the same duration as a Stereo mix. It's a nice little tip that I've learned over the last year or so of mixing in Atmos. Your Atmos file has to match the Stereo mix in terms of duration. So... If I'm going to print this and come back into the renderer, I'm going to create a new master file. Let's just name this mix one. You want to select your location. So let me do that real quick. Adding FFOA, yes or no. Uh, seems like most people that I have worked with don't add FFOA. So we're going to create that mix. You'll see the renderer highlight all the available objects. That's, again, mapped to the I.O. Now, if I hit record here to print this mix through the renderer, you'll see the error that I mentioned. So a recording error. Recording is disabled because there's a mismatch on the input configuration. Pretty easy to solve that. Go back into Pro Tools. Hit this Removed Unassigned Objects. Now, if I go back to the renderer, I can hit Record. No error. From there, I would print my mix, start to finish. Make sure my integrated level is lower than minus 18, which is the current spec. And that's how I manage one portion of my I.O. when it comes to working in Adobe Atmos and Pro Tools. Okay, there's one more trick I can show you, and I would call this an Atmos I.O. cheat when you're working inside of Pro Tools. As you can see, I've quit Pro Tools. I've outlined the cheat here, and I'll put this in the description of the video. You want to quit Pro Tools, then you're going to open up the input configuration window inside the renderer. So when the renderer is in focus, hit Command-I, there's your input configuration. What you can do is use default, and then hit Accept. Now, we're going to open Pro Tools back up. And while we wait for this, the reason this cheat comes into play is if you're moving these sessions around from studio to studio, you can get some grandfathered I.O. or some carryover I.O. from maybe um, the, that rig's Pro Tools and how that studio set up their Dolby Atmos I.O. versus how you set it up. It, it can grow fast, and you can get some mismatch on the renderer and the input configuration. This is a nice way to just reset and make sure things work. So I'm going to open up that same session. So once we hit default, we're going to open up one of your sessions. All right, now that the session's open, we want to go into the I.O. tab. 
Again, we've got a stream deck here, which helps me fire my I.O. As you can see, there's some drop mappings here, so we're going to fix this. Okay, so now, at this point, the input configuration was changed by us. We're using default. So what you want to do is restore this session, restore from session, but you want to make sure the Apply All Tabs button is, is selected here. That's going to pull the I.O. settings at, from the last saved portion or the last saved point of this session. As you can see, that's going to bring them all back. I'm going to pull up my cheat sheet there again just to show you. What we want to do next is make sure this session plays correctly. And I'm going to just fast forward through that again. Sorry, I can't show this song, unfortunately. So we want to check, make sure your session plays correctly. Then we're going to close that session. Now from there, we're going to create a new session. And I'm going to use my Atmos template that I have set up. Now here's the, the remaining trick. The I.O. settings. You want to create a new session with the I.O. that you've just fixed. So we're going to select the last used. And when you do that, I'm just going to name this really quick, something new. Now this will open, create a blank session. And then essentially the last step is to bring in your files from whatever mix you were working on. So this I.O. cheat, it really comes down to is if you find yourself having a mix and the I.O. gets jumbled and you need to kind of reset and start over, you can do this. So then if I go back into my I.O. settings, you'll see everything is mapped. Let's close this out, make sure. All right, let's do this. I applied my default configuration there, so that opens all the objects. Uh, and when I say open, I mean that they're not removed from the session. That's what we want, right? So now you can see, if we go into the I.O. tab, objects 11 through 128 are going to be all selected. And the input mapping to the renderer all matches. So there we go. There's a few ways that I manage the I.O. inside of Pro Tools when I'm mixing for Dolby Atmos. I hope that helps. Take care, and we'll catch you on the next one.